All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. And uh, welcome to the webinar on how to prepare for the EGU General Assembly in Vienna. Um, I'm Christina, and together with uh, my co-presenters, I'll be hosting this webinar today um, to let you know what we'll be going through. Uh, the webinar itself has three main parts. So uh, what is EGU? Introducing the structure of the organization, outlining uh, what exactly we're doing for early career scientists and what its general activities are. Then we'll go through the general assembly. What do you need to know about it in terms of presentation formats, how to prepare your presentation and how to assemble your personal program. Then the practicalities, the conference venue, where to stay in Vienna, how to get the latest news and uh, what to do in Vienna when you're taking a break. Uh, and after that, we'll have a Q&A session. If you have any questions during the webinar, please don't hesitate to drop them in the Q&A. And we'll be going through all of those that have not been answered by the end of the presentation at the end of the session. Um, the speakers today are so me. I'm the Early Career Sciences representative of the Hydrological Sciences Division. And all our other speakers, uh, Thanos, Santiago and Sanjun, are also from the Hydrological Sciences team. However, um, the information in this webinar is relevant across all divisions, no matter whether you're a geologist or an oceanographer. Um, this is for you. Before we get started, we'd like to uh, do a little icebreaker, but since we're quite a lot of people, we're not going to go around the room introducing ourselves, so you can breathe. Um, we have, however, prepared a Zoom poll. Um, Simon, could you launch that? So that uh, we can get an, um, an, an approximate idea of who you are, where you're from, and what sort of information is most relevant to you. So uh, the poll is live, and if you could uh, answer it, that would be fantastic. Okay, so uh, the vast majority of the people in here are um, either pre-PhD or PhD students. We have two postdocs, three mid-career scientists, and one scientist in a senior position. So uh, you can get some coffee while we're going through the ECS bit. Um, I can't see the geographical location. Simon, can you see those? Uh, yes, it links to an external page. But yeah, there's a wide variety of people from uh, Scandinavia, UK, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, etc. Amazing. Thrilled to have you. All right. And most of you have not um, attended EGU before, but some have attended other um, scientific conferences, which is great because EGU is um, quite a lot like other conferences, except it's usually bigger than um, than conferences in individual divisions and uh, in individual disciplines. All right. Now that we know who you are, it's uh, time to get started with the actual um, webinar and specifically with a bit about what EGU actually is. And with that, I'll hand over to Santiago. So what is EGU? Uh, first, to start, EGU is not the General Assembly. Gen EGU is the non-profit union of scientists. Why General Assembly is the main meeting that we have along the all the year. And some numbers about the, the EGU. First, it comes with more than 20,000 members uh, around the world. It comes with 22 scientific divisions and nine union world uh, committees that helps to promote and, and to organize this type of, uh, of events in the General, General Assembly. Regarding the EGU structure, it's mainly focused on uh, first a council that is responsible for all the management of the EGU activities a scientific division that is responsible for the activities that we have along all, all the year, a uh, executive board and a committee that helps also with some administrative and guides uh, activities, and the executive, uh, executive uh, officer that helps, uh, that is an internal uh, or organization uh, here in the EU that helps to organize internally all the, the activities. Moreover, here this is just one uh, picture of what it, what were the participants of each one of these different members in the 21-22 uh, period. Just for you to know that there is always people involved in this type of, of organizations. Now, the important part, what can EU do for you? What EU do through all the years? 
So if you have mainly four or five, uh, five, four, five uh, main activities, first one are the meetings that we will enter into detail in, uh, in a couple of minutes, uh, the journals and open access repository, so news, uh, outrage, uh, policy and education approaches, and of course some awards and medals to important scientists and important advances in the sciences of the geoscience uh, union uh, main focuses. Now uh, about the, the meetings, the the main, as, as I mentioned before, the main meeting that we have uh, along all the year is the General Assembly. This is in uh, Vienna, Austria, almost every year, and uh, it's in April or May, it depends on, on, on the year. For example, when it was a COVID season, this was not was possible to do it in, in, in Vienna, but it was a, a, a high, uh, online event. Yes. It's important to, mark, to remark that EU is always constantly uh, doing this type of, uh, of meetings. But it, the General Assembly is not the only meeting. There is also a series of conferences, uh, for example, like the Galileo conferences, that helps to support uh, the advances in uh, different fields that the EU, the EU supports along uh, the different scientific committees. Moreover, they also have some training schools for different for the different levels where the you are as you as a, as a researcher. For example, for a research scientist, they offer some special training uh, opportunities that we will look in a, in a couple of seconds. And uh, for example, this EU uh, supported program for other type of conferences in May uh, that you can also uh, apply if you are interested in these types of, uh, of trainings. Beyond meetings, and this is really important for you as a researcher, as a scientist, EU also come with, uh, with his own uh, uh, open access uh, journals. These are more than 19 open access journals that cover different topics. For example, this is a uh, little summary of hydrology, uh, hydrology and earth system science, natural hazards and earth system sciences, cryosphere. It has a lot of variety of things that you can apply. These are very renamed journals, I have to say. It's not because I'm sending papers there, but just, for, just, just, uh, just to mention. And this, of course, also have some public peer review. You can enter at EGU publications and you can see that there is opinions and comments about each paper if you are interested to look at the advances in these areas. Beyond this, EGU also comes with, it, with its own repository of image and videos. And here it's important to highlight that each year in the General Assembly is a competition for annual photo. Uh, and the winners of these competitions get a free registration to the next General Assembly. So if you are good at photo competition, I recommend you to, to access this uh, website and see what has been doing in the, in the previous years and what is the pictures that uh, are really important from the geoscience point of view. Moreover, from a news outrage policy and education uh, elements, uh, EU is constantly uh, updating its uh, members and participants about the news happening in any and all of the uh, different areas that EU contains. Uh, for example, with social media, media publications, you can follow the, the accounts in Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, uh, where even uh, the email, where there is constant updates. Maybe possibly how you how you get to know about this webinar that we're releasing today. As for outrage, we also have some blogging activities that are really important. If you are good at blogging, I also recommend you to check this type of uh, of activities. Policy, given the character of the EU as a science uh, non-funding organization, the EU also supports with this type of newsletter is part of a schemes of task force because of the EGO objective mission is not only to share science to make them general assembly but also how science could go connect with the communities as for education uh, there is workshops there is seminars there is webinars like the one we are uh, we are doing uh, there are teaching activities that EU is constantly updating and generating and offering funds if you are interested in this type. 
There is also the awards and medals where you recognize eminent scientists for their outstanding research and contribution in the different fields. Here, there are three, three main uh, awards that I want to mention, highlight. The first one, the Union and, Union and Division Level Medals. This is one for each, uh, for each time of, uh, of division or union. The second one, each year, is also recognized to the best work of the early career scientist. And last one, we also have the award Katia and Maurice Graf that recognize researchers who have implied innovative science communication because it's not only about developing science, but communicating uh, and engaging people uh, to join. If you have a nominate for next year uh, award, please nominate it before June of this year. Now, uh, what are early career scientists? Maybe you, you could see this uh, with the abbreviation of ECS. In general, EU defines the early career scientist as a student, PhD, a master of students, or practicing scientists who have received their highest certificate, their highest title, within the last seven years. And these early career scientists represent around 61% of EU members. So it's, a, it's an important sector of the participants and members of the EU as in the, in the General Assembly and in other activities that are beyond this. Moreover, if we look at the, the type of participants that we have, that's the reason that we also make a, the, the poll at the start. Uh, there is an important, uh, an important uh, part of the participants that are PhD candidates and regular members, and that attend not only to the General Assembly, but also contribute with the knowledge to uh, this type of uh, networking events. For example, EU General Assembly and EU in general is a very good opportunity for you to make some networking to create uh, connections between your division, between your network, between your area of research, not only in the General Assembly, but it's with more of the people is, but also beyond this. You also could can participate in the mentoring program of EU that supports early career scientists. Now, how can you contribute in the EU uh, event as an early career scientist more? First, you can organize sessions or courses. Everyone can submit their, uh, their ideas. There is annual uh, calls for uh, organizing sessions, organizing, uh, yeah, organizing events and courses. Also, you can organize some social events, have a drink at the pop at, at, at the General Assembly. Uh, you can also get involved with uh, the EU through blog, blog posters, Twitter. Yeah. So if you also like to make blogs and you want to share your information, EU is also a very good opportunity to share about this. And finally, you can become an early career scientist representative for your division within the EU. And talking about the ECS representative, it's they are the voice that represents all the early career scientists from each of the divisions. In general, there is always two representatives from each division. And they these are some examples of the people that have involved in the past are EU early career scientist representative. Even in the EU career scientist representative, it's selected one to represent it and participate in the main executive board of the EU. And as I mentioned, they ensure that your voice as an early career scientist is supported. Yeah, so if you have any questions, if you want support from your hydrology, from your uh, from your area, yeah, for example, I'm from uh, the hydrological sciences, so I contact with, with Christine if I have any question about how can I be involved more in, as an early career scientist. There is also some meetings during EU, regular Zoom meetings. We are also in contact to get to know which are the advances that we are doing. How can we uh, express communication about uh, EU, about the work, about meetings, about conferences. There is also organized some summer workshops. And there is, a, there is also an union that's a, of an, a meeting of all early career scientists representative. So they can ensure that the EU, that when is the General Assembly, that is the next week in, the, that is the weekend in April, it could get the best of the time to get the more, uh, the more important activities. 
So where are these early career scientists representative? First, as I mentioned, the, the scientific divisions, 22. There is also the, in the committees, in the, in the council, there is the representative of the early career scientists. And within the activities that they do, they are participating in the general assembly. They are also supporting with the journals that, uh, that the, the open access or, uh, journals that EU offers, like use of topical meetings, uh, education activities, and given a conferences. If you have any other, any, any, any feedback of, about uh, these activities, you can also contact your early career scientist representative, for example. As for the working groups in the early career scientists, uh, it's, not only, it's not only about science, it's also about work-life balance. It's about connectivity, get to know people. Yeah. It's about, for example, the pride, awards and medals, the jobs and career. How do you see yourself as a, as a, as a scientist within, within, a, within your division? And what does EU can offer you as an early career scientist, for example, they support the finance, they, they, they provide financial support. If you want to submit a, an abstract, if you don't have the, the money for go to the event, for participate, for send it to, 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 the, to the call of abstracts, and you offer support in this sense. So they, you have to be attentive to the, to the mails that you send when they say there is an, an, an strict date about uh, if you want to search, send your abstract, and your abstract is a very good quality, yeah, there is a process of selection in which around 31% of applications succeed, in which they get funds to participate as the uh, General Assembly. Moreover, uh, EU also offers some scientific recognition. This is really important. For example, uh, the one that is very popular is the Outstanding Student Poster and Pico Award. That is a votation within the, the General Assembly. And there is also awards for important uh, activities, important advances in science for the early career scientists. And additionally, the early career scientists, there is also often their webinars to the year. Uh, this year, for example, the, we have the webinar, How to Combine at EU 2024. This is the second of April, it's in uh, three weeks. Yep. And if you're organizing, if you are, you are organizing or you are interested in organizing a Combine at EU, I recommend you to follow this, uh, this webinar. EU also supports early career scientists at some short courses. This is an updated list of courses that are being uh, be present this year about uh, in the General Assembly. And uh, this also helps you not, these short courses are not only focused on science, but also in science communication, your career development. How can you say you position yourself inside an outside academia? These courses uh, are a really good approach of EU has to improve the early career scientists connections with the general community. Now for the following question, for the following part, I, now we, I'm going to share it with Thanos. So uh, let's discuss how to prepare for the annual EDU General Assembly. Let's begin first uh, with uh, exploring the three, uh, the three main presentation types available. First is the oral presentations, the posters and the PICO sessions. PICO stands for Presentive Interactive Content, so keep that in mind. Whether you are presenting virtually or on site, EDU offers flexibility, so you can choose either one of the available types. So this means you can participate in the General Assembly for anywhere in the world. Now, it's essential to acknowledge that uh, you might not receive the preferred presentation type. This is often due to the high number of abstracts submitted to each session. However, every presentation format offers valuable opportunities to share your research and engage with uh, fellow scientists. Now, let's focus on how to prepare your presentation. We we'll start how you particularly for oral sessions. Firstly, you need to remember that for oral presentation, you'll have a 10 minute time slot. It is important to keep that. 
This typically includes an eight minute presentation followed by a two minute question session. So it's crucial to keep your presentation, presentation consistent and uh, to the point. You'll uh, want to limit your slides to 10 to 15 at most using either PowerPoint or PDF format. The typical structure for the presentation should include the provided context, outlining your research questions, detailing your methods, presenting your results, and finally, of course, discussing the outcome of your work, implications, or uh, outlook of your findings. Also, keep in mind that you need to upload your presentation 24 hours before your time slot in your designated online space. This ensures the smooth proceedings during the conference. Don't forget to practice your presentation in advance to ensure you stick to your allowed time and maintain clarity. And also do not forget to include your institution logos, co-authors and affiliations on your slides. Uh, lastly, consider uploading supplementary materials for further discussion if needed. Furthermore, if uh, you, are, uh, uh, you are about to take part in the OSPP award, then you need to clarify that also to your presentation. Now, let's discuss how to prepare for a poster session. Poster presentation are an excellent opportunity to present your research in a condensed format, highlighting the most important information. The key here is uh, to effectively capture the essence of your work and make it visually appealing and easy to understand, firstly at a glance and uh, with some more simple explanation. Also consider adapting an easily understandable and appealing poster design. For example, maybe a fractal design to guide the AI organizing your content in uh, a way that draws the, viewer attention, the viewer's attention from a distance while offering also detailed information upon uh, a closer uh, inspection. You also have the option to either print your poster in advance or on site, so you should consider that depending on your convenience. You should also ensure that uh, you put up your poster in the morning of your presentation day and be present during your designated time slot so as to engage with uh, the interested attendees and answer any questions that may have. Also, it is strongly advised to add the photography guidelines regarding sharing or not your work. By following these tips, you will be well prepared to make the most out of your poster. Let's move on to your, our final presentation type, which is the PICO sessions. The PICO sessions consist of a two minute oral presentation, followed by a presentation time at the touch screen. So this format gives you opportunity for a dynamic way to engage with your audience and allows for interactive discussions about your work. Keep in mind that uh, you need to prepare two presentations for a PICO session. The first one is for the oral presentation, and the second one is the, for the viewing at the touch screen. The oral presentation uh, should be consist and captivating, providing a brief overview of your research in just two minutes. For the viewing part, you will have the advantage of unlimited slides presented in a 60 to 9 or as in widescreen format. Also, a good advice is to insert links into your presentation, including a home button for easier navigation, which uh, can help viewers explore different sections of your presentation and find the information they're most interested in, interested in. By preparing effectively for both the oral and the viewing components of your presentation, PICO presentation, you'll be able to effectively show your research and engage with your audience in a straightforward 
and also in a meaningful way. So let's talk now about uh, how to put together your personal program for the general assembly. But before we do that, I want to mention that if you want, there is also a webinar series here, follow with this link or how to prepare your presentation. It's for an older year. So it's basically what we'll say now, but more detail if you want something more. So let's talk about how you put to your personal program. First, of course, you should log in into your EDU account and take a look at the online program. You can filter sessions by division and also by time slot. You should mark the ones that cut your eye and prioritize, prioritize them based on your interest as well as your schedule. It is very, very helpful to download the EGU24 app. I think it's available for both Android and iOS and uh, at least our memory. It's a handy tool and uh, gives you access to the program and stay up to, so as to stay updated on the go. Be sure to check out uh, the networking events like the Early Career Scientist networking event on Tuesday evening, as well as other events like the Pride. These gatherings are great opportunities to connect with fellow attendees and meet new people and colleagues. There are also new uh, and upcoming uh, gathering events that will be announced during the EGU session. Also keep an eye out for pop-up events too. This may not be in the official schedule, but uh, could offer valuable, valuable networking and other opportunities. And remember also uh, to factor in breaks through your day. Taking time to rest and recharge is just as important as attending session. So by following these steps, you'll be able to tailor your experience at the general assembly to suit your interests and also make the most out of your time there. So now I'm going to give speech back to Christina. All right, practicalities. Now that we've heard about uh, what, the, uh, what the general assembly involves, how to prepare your presentation, how to put together your program, and about the EDU in general, I'll take you through some more detailed and applied things that you'll need to know when you're on site in Vienna. So uh, the conference venue, uh, the Austria Center, is not directly in um, in the city center, which is marked here in red. It's actually um, a little outside um, on the other side of the Danube. So this is the Danube, the biggest river in Vienna. And you'll have to take the um, underground, the U1, to get to uh, the Austria Center. The stop is uh, Kaisermühl uh, VIC, which stands for Vienna International Center. Um, if you're coming by train, you'll probably arrive uh, here at Wien Hauptbahnhof, the main train station. And if you're coming by a bus, you'll be ending up here on the number three line at um, Max. If you're coming by um, plane, and there's the airport in this direction, um, a little more to the south of the city. So to get to the conference venue and generally around Vienna, I would really um, recommend public transport. It's fast, it's reliable, and um, undergrounds and trams go every couple of minutes. There is the Wien Mobile app, um, which I would recommend you download. So basically it has all the information on the um, how to get to your, um, to your destination from where you are, how often the trams and trains uh, and underground um, goes. So it's very reliable. Plus your conference batch serves as a free transport ticket during the GA. So whenever you arrive in Vienna, make sure you just buy enough tickets to actually get to the conference venue. Once you've picked up your badge, that will serve you for the rest of the week. Um, if you arrive at the airport, um, there are several possibilities to get from the airport to the city center. There's a city airport train called CAT. There's the airport shuttle bus, which will drop you at the train station. But the easiest, fastest, and cheapest way is to get the um, train. There's an UBB railjet. So um, UBB are the Austrian railway services, which takes about a quarter of an hour and only costs four euros instead of the 15 that you need to pay for the airport train. Um, the conference venue itself looks like this. It's the Austria Center, and it has uh, five levels in total. 
it has a triangular shape and it can get very confusing. So if you can't find your way around straight away on the first day, don't worry, you're not alone. Um, so the for poster presentations, um, the most important level is the red one. This is where um, most of the poster presentations are. And then you basically uh, go up to the blue level on number on the number third. So that's uh, the roof, basically, where you also have the roof terrace. And uh, most of the short courses uh, for ECS in particular are going to be on the purple level, which is minus two. So you're not going to be alone. You'll be running around like a headless chicken for the first half day at least to find your way around. But on day two, three, slowly, you'll manage to, to orient yourself. Also, something um, that is uh, that you should keep in mind is that on level zero and level level minus two, there are also other facilities. So the cloakroom, quiet rooms, prayer room, childcare, family rooms, etc. And um, the expos and pico presentations are also in the annexes here. For batch pickup, it's not in the in the main center actually, but in the hall to the left that you see here. So when you come in, you pick up your batch here. And this is also where um, some of the, the, the vendor stools and the expo stools are. One very important thing to keep in mind is food. So Vienna has pretty great cuisine, but I'll get into that a little later. Where you can eat at the uh, Austria Center. There are no... Um, cafes, restaurants within the Austria Center. There's a small um, a sort of cafeteria store where you can get coffee and a sandwich and um, some cake in between um, time slots, in between sessions. But to actually eat, you will have to go outside. Um, as you can see here, there are some food stalls in front of the conference venue directly. But to get some proper, um, proper food, you'll have to move a little more. So just next to the underground stations, uh, underground station, there are a couple of um, cafes, a couple of um, of restaurants. There's a walk there. There's a pizzeria a little further away, and um, a little deli on the banks of the Danube directly. If you're in the hurry, there's a fantastic bakery called Strück right here. So you can definitely find some food in the vicinity of the conference center. If you're planning to stay in the conference center all day, like if you have lunchtime meetings, for example, I would very much advise you to um, bring along something in the morning already. Now, where to stay in Vienna? Um, the conference program came online today, so some of you might already have booked your accommodations, others might not. If you haven't, I can uh, recommend staying anywhere on the U1. Uh, so the U1 uh, on the ground one is the red line here. So there's the main train station here. There's the city center at Stephansplatz, which is where you have uh, St. Stephen's Cathedral. Um, so this is basically the heart of Vienna right here in this sort of circle made by the by the undergrounds. The conference venue, VIC Kaisermühle, is this stop right here. So these stops on the U1 are fantastic places to stay, as well as the connecting stops on the U4, that's the green line between Friedensbrücke and Stadtpark, and on the um, U3, that's the orange line, between right around Neubaugasse and Kardinal Nagelplatz. So if you're staying on these lines, you have a fantastic connection to go straight to the, um, to the, to the conference center. One thing you need to be careful about is the U2, that's the um, that's the violet line right here, because there are currently disruptions because um, the uh, Viennese are building a new underground line, namely the U5. So the stops between the university and the city hall are actually disrupted and not being serviced. Careful about that. One thing that's quite funny about Vienna is that uh, they never managed to build the U5 since the 1970s until now, but they did manage to finish the U6 ages ago. So the U5 is actually going to be inserted here, which is causing a lot of disruptions, but it's a very, very Viennese thing. Next, while you're at the GA, it's important to keep up with news. Things are constantly changing and happening and events are being highlighted that you might not have heard about before. So how do you do that? Um, 
the best way to go about it is to uh, sign up for EGU, for the EGU newsletter, as well as the division mailing lists. So for example, in the hydrological sciences division, doing a bit of promotion here, we are um, just putting out a newsletter. First edition went out yesterday. So if you came here from that, yay. Um, but also the other divisions have newsletters as well. They send out important updates and news. Plus, um, many sent out a sort of division relevant schedule with the meta lectures, meetings, and um, the 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 panels just before the GA. So make sure you're signed up for your division mailing lists. You can adapt your preferences in your EGU account. Then there's also the overall EGU newsletter and of course the EGU news site. Right. This is how you can uh, sign up for the individual mailing list. So you log in, you go to manage your mailing list subscriptions, and then you have the mailing list. So uh, they're the general lists. Those are the ECS announcements for um, early career scientists, the general EC EGU newsletter, and then the division lists. Be careful. There are there's the general division list, and then there's the division list just for the ECS. Depending on where you are, make sure you sign up for both. Also, just because you signed up for the GA does not mean you're automatically registered for your division list. You need to do that manually and separately. However, when you do register for the conference, you can check this uh, box, the EGU Today subscription, which will send you one email per day um, highlighting events at the GA. So that's just one message per meeting. Another fantastic way to keep up with what is happening in your division, especially during the General Assembly, is social media. So we use these channels to share updates and information, not just during the General Assembly, but during the entire year. Highlight publications, blog posts, as well as general geoscience news, answer questions or reply to comments, and of course, give a face to the union. So that we're not just this blue circle with the yellow logo, but actual people behind it. There's an entire list of EGU division social media that you should be able to find online um, in this list right here. So not all divisions have all the different um, social media channels. So for example, in hydrological sciences, we have Instagram, um, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So, but that might not be the same for the geologists, for example. Finally, there are also the blogs. Each division has a blog, and um, we use it to feature new research from the different journals, interview scientists, cover la the latest news in our fields, and give some updates on uh, EGU activities and ECS. So heads up, just before the GA, most divisions post a um, an article about the important um, slots, the important um, dates and events for your particular division. So especially when you're putting together your personal program, check out the blog of your division. It's likely to have some highlights for the GA. Plus, if you want to get involved, you can also submit a post. So if you have, if you want to share your research project or share your experience um, in the field or as an early career scientist in uh, your institution, this is a fantastic opportunity. Just check out the blog, see what sort of articles they have online and then reach out to the editors. I swear we're going to be thrilled to hear from you. Finally, um, Thanos already mentioned that it's important to take a break. The conference is incredibly exciting and very fun to attend, but it can also be incredibly exhausting. It's huge. You saw we have 20,000 abstract submissions this year right around and even more attendance because you also have the conference staff and people who are just coming and not giving a presentation. So it's going to be dense, it's going to be a lot, but it's going to be fantastic. When you take a break, uh, there's lots of stuff that you can do in Vienna. So I lived there for seven years, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the food is fantastic, especially the cafes and the cake. I very much recommend the cake. These are just some of them um, at the bottom in order the Kanker Hofzucker Becker Heiner, K and K, so K and K, by the way stands for Kaiserlich und Königlich. That was um, the imperial uh, bakery, basically, when Vienna and Austria were still a monarchy. And a lot of the buildings that you'll be visiting are from the 1700s to 1900s. 
There's also musical theater uh, currently on its Phantom of the Opera and a musical about Amadeus. Um, there's a lot of classical music going on, so the Vienna State Opera and as well as the Musikverein, which is where the Vienna Philharmonics and the Vienna Symphonic Orchestra play. And it's important to mention that tickets aren't that expensive. At the opera, for example, you can get standing room tickets, which are like 10 euros. And you can also go there spontaneously. If you book in advance, you can get pretty good seats ready for like 30 euros. So this is something you should take into account. Um, plus there are the um, museums and imperial castles you can visit. There's uh, Schönbrunn, which was the summer palace, the KHM Kunsthistorisches Museum, which you see here, which is the main art history museum. There's also a fantastic cafe in there with amazing cake. Um, the Belvedere, which is where you can see a lot of works by Klimt, the Albertina, which has impressionists, for example, Monet, Picasso, and all that, and the Hofburg, which was the Imperial Winter Palace. So I very much advise you to take advantage of being in Vienna and also just enjoying the city a little bit when you're not busy networking and making connections and finding out about amazing new scientific discoveries at the General Assembly. All right, um, that was it for the practicalities. Uh, we have 15 minutes left of the webinar and we have time for the Q&A. If you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A tab below and I'll hand over to Fang Jun who will be going through them. Uh, so there would be, there has been uh, three questions in the chat. Uh, uh, the first one, uh, we have typed something information here, but uh, it's from uh, Nadmi. So she asked, he, he or she asked that I have chosen post a presentation, but I will be only able to attend the conference virtually or can be done here. Okay, I see Simon has already answered that in the chat. Um, yeah. Simon, you maybe want to say that out loud again? so that everyone can hear it as well with the recording. So I'll just jump in here and uh, just apply what I said. I think there was a concern about uh, the virtual poster presentation. Um, in the first case, if you have a virtual poster presentation, um, this will be included in its own specific time block at the conference. Um, this year, we've tried to improve our hybrid uh, format. So in-person attendees were able to interact more easily with virtual attendees. You can do this by, by during the um, time block for virtual poster presentations, you can go to the key code response. There, you can ask uh, questions of virtual attendees and also look at the posters interactively. So if you're doing a virtual presentation or you want to interact with virtual content, you can do that at, at the Pico uh, spots. More information uh, will be released uh, for that, you can also check the guidelines on the EGU website. However, if you, for example, applied for in-person uh, poster presentation, um, but you can only attend virtually and there's been a change in how you can um, attend the assembly, then you'll need to contact the convener of your session as soon as possible. Um, when you uh, submitted your abstract, you should have received some information uh, about the contact details for the conveners of your session. However, if you can't find that email, you can still find that information on the egu24.eu website. And to find that information, you simply go to the programs, give a search in the search bar for the session you've applied for or been uh, part of, or you can either go to the program um, and then you select uh, the program group you're part of, which for scientific sessions will be one of the disciplines like uh, geodesy or ocean sciences, hydrological sciences, natural hazards, etc. And then when you click on that, it'll show all the sessions under that division. And then um, once you find a session title, underneath it will be all the conveners. There will be a magnifying glass symbol next to the convener name. If you hover your mouse over that, then you'll get the uh, contact details or just click on the session title and it should be provided on the next page. But again, you can always just search for it in the search bar. So virtual presentations, there will be a hybrid format to allow virtual presenters, virtual attendees and in-person attendees to interact with each other. But if your situation has changed, please contact your conveners as soon as possible. Yep, thank you very much, Simon. Uh, 
So there will be a second question from Caroline. Uh, Caroline asks, could you please clarify, I didn't quite understand what was meant by with buying all public transport tickets and then something about using the conference badges. I see that yeah. Sanos would like to... Oh, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to show the badge? Sorry. I'm yeah. just going to jump in because I happen to have my last year's conference badge um, right here. So um, this is what your conference badge is going to look like. Um, blue ribbon and this sort of like this. It has, oh, very important, your conference badge just because I see it now, also has a QR code. When um, people scan that QR code, they'll get to the profile that you filled out during your um, during your registration. You can still um, update that profile. So uh, make sure that that's up to date so that whoever scans the QR code on your batch um, has up to date information about you. Now, what I meant was that at the back right here, it says uh, that from the Viennese uh, transport system that your conference batch counts as a public transportation ticket, which is valid during the conference. So what I meant when I said, um, make sure that you can that you buy enough um, public transport tickets to get to the conference is that as soon as you have your batch, you don't need any more separate tickets because this is your public transport ticket. I hope that's clear. So uh, when you arrive in Vienna, get a ticket for the underground, go to the conference center, pick up your batch, and then you're covered because this is your public transport ticket. Also, um, because I see the additional badges now, um, this is your division sticker, which you can pick up at the um, Early Career Scientist networking event so that everyone who you meet knows that, oh, by example, you're from the Hydrological Sciences Division. And this right here, um, is a sticker for the mentoring program. Um, Santiago mentioned it very quickly, but the EGU offers a mentoring program for first time attendees. So if you've never been to the GA, if you want an experience, usually early career scientist who's been to the GA a couple of times to ask questions, to, to show you the ropes basically, you can apply for the mentoring scheme online and you'll be assigned someone to basically act as your point person. Great. Great. Thank you, Christina. Helen asks that for the PICO sessions, the first one, do I submit two files or should the slides for the two minutes presentation be included in the touch screen presentation? And the second one, will people only be able to click through the PDF slides or can I include action button in my presentation so people can interact with the PowerPoint? So regarding the first question, yep. yes, you do submit two files. The first file is for the two minute presentation. So it be it be one, two or three slides. Keep it short. And you submit a second file, again, a presentation, but this is an with unlimited, uh, uh, you don't have a limit in your, in the number of slides. The second one would be after the first. So to have to keep in mind that it's a session where people will talk for two minutes and then everyone gets a touch screen. And there is your second presentation, which do not have a limit to how many slides you have. And there can both be PDF or PowerPoint. If you want to have action buttons, you can have PowerPoint slides, and that will be perfectly fine. And the next one is Victor ask, can the link for train meeting, which the second presentation presenter spoke about, be sent here? Uh, yeah, we will, we will send the link here. Uh, and is it, I, I think that was on his second slide or so. Where's the last me? Yeah, we will find the link. Yeah, uh, Santiago, can you maybe look for that? Also, as a side note, this webinar will be online, so you'll be able to basically check out everything um, that you might have missed, all the links, all the information on the slides um, later on. Yes, Simon, please. Hello, just to say, uh, I posted the YouTube link for EG webinars uh, in the chat, so everyone should be able to link that. It links to uh, all the online resources we're cultivating, including this one. Um, 
So there will be one for how to be a presenter. There are also other webinars about presentations. For example, there's one that looks at presentations for, for oral and um, posters in one webinar. So find multiple webinars that address this uh, from previous years. Yeah, great. The next question is Leija uh, asks, the program should be out today, but I cannot see if I'm accepted to do the oral presentation which was my preference? Should I be waiting for an email of the confirmation? Correct me if I'm wrong, Simon, but yes, letters of schedule uh, should be sent out with your presentation type and um, your exact time slot. Yeah, that's correct. You'll be receiving the letter of schedule around the same time the program is released. I suggest uh, if not receiving an email, wait a bit. It takes, there's a lot of presenters and attendees to go through, so um, these eventually will reach you. Um, but if you are worried, then I suggest again, just contact your session convener again. Um, again, that should be in previous emails you received, or again, you can find the conveners by looking for your session on the online program. And the next question is Sodic uh, ask some of us opted for the badge to be sent to us before the conference. In this case, can I use the ticket as the back of the badge from the airport to the hotel? Also, can I use the ticket to transport myself to the airport after the conference? No, because uh, the airport is quite far in the south of the city, so it's outside of the what the Viennese uh, public transport lines call the core zone. So um, basically, all the underground lines are in the core zone. All the buses um, within this sort of um, within this limitation of the underground perimeter are within the core zone. But the airport is not, so you will have to shell out the extra four euros to get to the airport. Yes, I wanted to add to what Christina said that the tickets go from Monday to Friday, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So if you are planning to arrive on Sunday or planning to go out on Saturday, the tickets will will not help you. Yeah, you will have to buy the tickets for those days. Yeah. Check on the back of the batch as soon as you have it. It'll tell you exactly when it's valid. And oh, and to yeah. add, um. The Viennese underground system is a little peculiar because in a lot of other cities, Paris, London, et cetera, et cetera, you have to sort of scan your ticket to get into the underground. That is not the not the case in Vienna. You can't, there's no, there are no barriers. There are no um, standardized controls. We just trust that you have a valid ticket, but there are spot controls. So it can be that uh, when you come out of the station, there'll be people waiting to control your ticket, but there are no sort of standard barriers. So you, you don't have to be. You don't have to use any ticket to get in. Yeah, thank you. And the final question in the chat is Victor ask when will abstract be online so that when it is shared, it can be accessed by others. The publication of the programs, the abstracts will be soon to follow. So again, unfortunately, I can't give a um, a direct direct answer right now. All I can say is check the program. The program is being released today, so check that today. Um, and otherwise, keep an eye on um, the program itself, and also uh, make sure you're signed up to any newsletters regarding um, EGU, as they'll also give you updates there. So again, the program is being released today. That should have most of the information. Um, otherwise, yeah, keep an eye out for newsletters. Yeah. Also, um, just as a side note. Like we said, it's very big. So rolling out the entire program takes a little while. Uh, same for the letters of schedule. Keep an eye on your inbox. They should be coming very soon. And um, just check back online in the next couple of days. Just to jump in very quickly, I'm just going to post go in the chat um, the March updates. So the newsletter that goes out through emails is also available on the uh, EG24 Thank website. You can add link and it also has information on, for example, letters of schedule, etc. So, sorry, I'll just appear again. Thank you. No, um, I think that's pretty much it. If we have no other questions, uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for participating. Thank you for asking questions. And I hope to see all of you uh, in Vienna. And if you come across us, if you see us at the ECS meeting, don't hesitate to say hi. Um, have a fantastic day and um, a good lunch break in most cases, I think. <laughs>